Welcome back to Two Homers and a Realist. The Sooners win, defeating the mighty Temple Owls, 51-3. to They covered the spread. It was a beautiful day in Norman, and definitely no complaints. I'm Steve. Jay. Connor. Lucas. And, guys, I'm going to be honest. It's going to be tough to be um, too much of a homer here, but I'll tell you one thing I am a homer about. That's our new sponsor, Little Debbie Snack Cakes. We would like to thank our title sponsor, Little Debbie Snack Cakes. From oatmeal cream pies to zebra cakes, from cosmic brownies to honey buns, Little Deb has you covered. I'll never forget the taste of the nutty buddy wafer my mom handed me as we cheered for the 1985 National Championship. <laughs> and after a loss, I take shelter in a big bag of mini donuts. Whether you're celebrating another victory or finding comfort in a loss, Little Debbie snack cakes are sure to be there. Thanks to our sponsors at Little Debbie. We definitely think Little Debbie. Yep, I tell you the sure. truth, we needed some snack cakes tonight to both reward our defense and to comfort ourselves as we watched our offense struggle. Yeah. What'd you guys think? Brutal. Yeah, go for it. Brutal. The offense was just atrocious in my opinion. Um, the offensive line, I know it's beat up and I know they're shifting players around, but there was, there was zero push whatsoever. And even the protection at times, uh, Arnold didn't have, all day to throw, which I guess you shouldn't have all day, but he was still rushed too often. Um, as you mentioned, defense was great. Uh, looks like we found a kicker. But overall... Oh, I'm, kicker was strong. I'm I mean, not feeling... Well, it looks like we found a kicker. Come yeah. on. Uh, you 50, never know. 50 yard field yeah, goal. Yeah, it was good. Under pressure. Right through the middle. Yeah. yeah, and it had about three or four extra yards on. Yeah. Def <laughs> definitely nothing well, we to worry about there. We might be kicking a lot. <laughs> we had three today. It seemed like we were... I mean, that might be a normal thing. Yeah. Well, the most disappointing of all of them, not to jump too much into the details yet, but when you're on the five yard line and you're settling for a field goal, that's just that's just really frustrating. Or or the ten or wherever they got down to there at the end, um, when they tried to call a uh, intentional yeah, ground. Yeah, the six. That yeah, was... I was yelling in the stands. I, I I didn't understand how that was ever a possibility. He ran from one side of the field to the other side and was clearly outside the tackle box and he threw it into well, the stands but well past the first down so the, it, the to me i didn't realize came close i didn't realize and i'm not sure if it was a question of the tackle box although if you run back into the tackle box you're back in it yeah which is stupid but um i thought it actually was pretty close to not being past the line of scrimmage from my vantage point but i didn't look real uh, well, from the end zone, it, I can tell you it was well past the which would be scrimmage. hard because you're looking at it two dimensionally, but that doesn't make geometry, any sense. Right. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> I know you're a well, I'm looking guy. at it from right above and I can see <laughs> you clearly. So, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Let's dive right into it. So, where do we want to start with the positive or the negative? Negative. All right. Go with the negative. I mean, no, I mean, I'm tacking on everything that Jay has already said. It's, uh, same same notes no no time to throw in the pocket i mean the the pocket was not there at all tonight um i didn't expect a lot from the offensive line i expected a lot more than what i saw though against temple you know what i mean like it was just it wasn't there and our center goes down early but nonetheless like we should have guys out there to field who can create a pocket and a and, and protection for jackson um also just felt like the play calling and the rhythm of the offense wasn't there at all uh, I think Brent came out after the game and said that it was by choice or by, by game plan that they didn't go down the field with the ball. Um, I would kind of counter that with, even if they had a, a down the field option available, Jackson didn't have enough time to throw the ball anyways. So uh saw a lot of QB runs tonight. Well, I maybe that was the, the design part. Yeah. That maybe they knew they didn't have time. Yeah, exactly. That, so. so, so, and that doesn't bode that's well. Very for, scary. Yeah, against that's very scary. Against a team that went 3-9 and nine last year, right. you shouldn't be in the situation that you can't have a five-step drop and let a guy run 30 yards and you're throwing it over the top to him. And they weren't yards. just bringing pressure packages either. I mean, yeah. they were getting home with just like their four. Three, three or four, yeah, exactly. So that, and then uh, on top of that, I think the last thing I'll add is just uh, the run game was, was disappointing up until you get our third and fourth string guys in there. Uh, Gavin Sawchuk, unimpressive, in my opinion. I think we we said it before the podcast. A lot of just looked like didn't know where his hole was, didn't know where to go, dancing around in the backfield. Um, wasn't until we got 
Tatum in there and uh, uh, Franklin Franklin in there where we really saw some explosive plays or some uh, some gains that were worth noting. So it's concerning. I mean, it, it is concerning, I think. So um, one of the things that I don't I'm not trying to make this like a positive spin, but maybe just a I, I might fold it into one in a minute. But when they're in there with um, and I didn't really pay attention to it when it was Franklin and Tatum, was it some backup linemen or was it just the same line, line package? Did you guys notice? For Tatum, it was different linemen. So in those cases, are they simplifying it and just moving forward? Now, I know they're probably going up against maybe some backup players for Temple, right, too. Right, because you can't tell. So, we, yeah, I noticed that number in. seven defensive tackle that looked really good and it was very dominant, so I wasn't in for some of that. But – I'm wondering if they simplify the offense to the degree of just, hey, push, go forward, find a hole and go, which I've always argued when when all else fails, just do that. You're you're going to out athlete these guys. Just do that and you'll have success. And maybe maybe when they're in, in the first half, when they're using their obviously number one package, they're trying to do things that are wrinkles of, of their offense not just push and get a yard or get a hole to open up for a running back so i don't know but it's it's hard to judge obviously that success that we saw from those guys late in the game because everything's different at that point it really sucks that we can't judge seth latrell's first game compared to a jeff levy game because <clears throat> there was no flow whatsoever to the offense they didn't really, because of the defensive turnovers, didn't get to put together any long drives because we kept turning the ball over and getting the ball on their half of the field, and we only had 30, 40 yards to go score. So he really couldn't get a flow of, to see what his – Although when they did, they failed. Gonna do. Well, yeah, because we did have a couple of punts on a longer drive mm-hmm. that didn't happen. But it's hard to tell what he was trying to do. I, I saw one play that I really liked where Jackson took the snap took a couple steps forward and then dropped back. It was one to, to draw the defense in. So I thought that one might be an over the top and they get sacked. Yeah. So I think the play design was there, but the blocking wasn't. Right. Um, and then it, he seemed a little off today. There were some some throws on coming over the middle, like drag routes where he was throwing behind guys a little bit. Yeah. Um, receivers didn't do any favors on no. catches. So many drops. So many drops. Hester had a couple – Thompson had a couple. Anthony uh, had one. Anthony had one. Burks had one. I mean, it was just one of those days where you expect coming out of fall camp that the timing is going to be better than it was, and it wasn't. But you really think guys can catch footballs. and You do. I mean, even uh, everything was out of sync. Did uh, Bauer have one drop, too? I don't remember. I feel like he had, he had a drop. He might too. have. His biggest problem, he didn't know when to be out there on special teams. That was just crazy. Right. How do you not know to when you're part of the unit? Yeah. So the only thing concerning on special teams, and then I want to come back to the receiver, mm-hmm. was Bauer not knowing if he's supposed to be out there. And then the I guess it's the long snapper who was having the problem, not the holder. But twice, we almost can't kick an extra point. Um, now, a third time, we almost probably got a penalty because the schooner ran out between the touchdown and the extra point. That was bad. That's a 1984 Orange Bowl level uh, get a penalty stuff. But um, I thought that the receiving core being out of sync, you could chalk that up to a couple of different things. I mean, coming out of fall camp, I would expect everybody to be a little rusty and first game jitters and all that kind of stuff. Um, Well, it almost makes you wonder if they had a hard time practicing offense, to be honest. Right, right. Against a great defense. Yeah. So I, I, they might have had a really hard time balancing that where yeah, to get you a just, rhythm. You just run your ones versus twos, though. And, yeah, our twos are better than Temple's ones. But but you got to run your ones. Be able... You can't not play your ones. I mean, you can for a third of the practice. Well, I don't know. I, I would imagine they probably did have a hard time getting a rhythm. And I, I was going to say with them being you know out of sync, part of out, of out of sync is if your quarterback doesn't have time to find you, everything's going to look bad. It just is – it's one thing after another that just sort of unravels when it when you can't control the, the trench and you're getting penetration and your quarterback's under duress and he's a young quarterback. So when he's under duress, it is easy for him to get a little bit frazzled. His little bit frazzled could be thrown behind a guy. Where we had some them guys design rollouts for him that 
still it felt like he had the protection long enough to roll it out, but our receivers weren't open early enough and yeah. kind of had to hang on to the ball. I think he took some shots today that he shouldn't have had to. Yeah. Even on yeah. the design rollout ones. I agree. Uh, there was – He's got to watch I that. I really too. hated the one where we got a false start and he didn't throw the ball down. Yeah. And he, he took a he took a pretty good shot getting slung down. Right. When the whistles were blowing. Well, I thought that should have been a penalty. Doing, it should have been, but it's still one of those cases where, you know, when you – especially when you watch the NFL, those guys, as soon as that whistle blows, they just throw it straight in the ground. And he right. had the, he had time enough to you're do right. that. That you're right. And he didn't. So that's something that needs to be coached. That's a great like, point. Hey, when that whistle's blowing for a false start, you just spike it right at the ground. Right. And that guy should see it and stop coming at you. Well, at I don't the very think, least, he's I not don't think hit it was you. dirty. I just think the guy didn't hear the whistle. Whistle, honestly. And that's I, why. That's why. I yeah. No, I think he didn't. Because he didn't. Too. He didn't try to kill it. But he had. He threw him down, yeah. and he had to know. The, the, I don't know. It, it, it's technically it's a penalty. Yeah. Hear it or not, it's you know. Hear the whistle or not, right. it's well, we, and you know, here yeah, we got not, away with some whistles we, too. We got we got a couple of uh, late call, you know, personal fouls, late hits later in the we game. We got away but, with the shoe throw. Yeah, the shoe throw was awful. We got away with uh, the Bowman. I think got in trouble with the ref in the first the first. He's no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah Bowman spiked oh, yeah. the ball. Yeah, the the quarterback overthrew a guy on a route and it landed his feet and he picked it up and he spiked it because he he was hoping he could. Get an interception. I don't know. Like I think he was. I don't know if he was mad. Is it? He was. He was. He was dying. Yeah, I think yeah. he was celebrating. He was amped up, but it was also like he thought, you know, if I'd have saw that a little bit quicker, I could have dove on the. Yeah, I don't know if he was. It. I don't know if and his so dad or frustration. Like, oh, I should have. Had I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was. No, I didn't think it was frustration. I think he was elated. Yeah. Because he was coming off to the sidelines. It seemed like overjoyed at yeah. their success, and the ref had to track him down yeah. if they don't. Yeah, which was very fortunate because that should that's a 15 yard penalty exactly yeah and that later in the year will be in a critical game or critical worse situation a, they get you on the five the oh. five yard delay of game they, right they can call that too if they want to and and any of it could be could be but yeah, very critical throw, yeah that's you that. throw you got to have more composure yeah, i missed that. that who did that um or mason it no uh oh i i texted yeah. you guys who it was um yeah it was uh just, I mean, it was 15 yards that he threw that running back shoot. And then we had a we had a late hit out of bounds, which what I hate about the way they started Kip calling Lewis. that Kip Lewis, yeah. is they're calling that after the play. So the play is happening. The guy takes one step out of bounds and then gets the extra shove. It's right. 15 yard penalty. But they say after the play, 15 yard penalty. Right. So they got essentially doesn't really change a whole lot, but they get two first downs in that play. Because the guy gained 15 or 18 yards or whatever, and then that counts the first down, and then they give him a first down for the 15 extra yards, as right. opposed to calling it during the play and it being a 30-yard gain or whatever in a single first down. And when we had a prop bet on that, which yep. uh, Jay, I think, had over, over mm -hmm. and we all had under. Yeah. So Way to go, Jay. We uh, go. missed on that one. So sticking with offense for a minute before we get to the defense, where we're going to have a lot of praise. Um, so – they had their moments, but even their moments were inconsistent. And they were inconsistent in terms of stringing moments together. They didn't have until the very end, even in the very end, but until the very end when it's, you know, just slop football, it doesn't matter. They just weren't putting play after play after play together. Um, uh, the closest they came was sort of on that first drive. And they almost stalled out even then. Um Oh, for uh, one, one for twelve, one for twelve, and in, in third downs, and the one conversion and the one the touchdown, and one was the touchdown, and then and they did get three for three on fourth downs, but against Temple and did well. They did they did really well in in execution of those, but yeah, you shouldn't be resorting to fourth downs right. unless it's. I mean, you shouldn't have if you're resorting to fourth downs, it's because it just happens and you have a million possessions. And that wasn't the case. We were just getting stopped on third down, which was very frustrating. A lot of, I don't know if it was a check down and a second look or what, but a lot of throws on a third down behind the sticks. And that's just not going to get it done. You can't do that. We complained a lot about Levy doing that last year. And so I don't know how much that's Jackson versus the play call or what. So let me, let me challenge just a little bit on the offense and some of this will be a stretch or playing devil's advocate but one way you could look at it is to say we got bailed out by turnovers but you could also say we actually 
is that necessarily true or could it be the case that turnovers actually were to the detriment of the offense having chances to perform yeah because you're you're put in different situations will, which will dictate the flow of play if you got the ball on whatever they had it on several of those possessions inside the 50 you're going to perform differently you're going to call plays differently than if you're going to stretch the field yeah. so it you know if I'm if I'm an, an offensive coordinator and and down I'm probably disappointed that we didn't get to work our offense as much as you get to work an offense in a normal game. Uh, not that that's a very good excuse. And I don't think so. I don't think, I think I worry that we got bailed out by turnovers rather than turnovers were to our detriment. Yep. I don't know that we got bailed out. I don't think the game was ever going to be. I mean, from the standpoint of how close and bad it would have been, and we wouldn't have covered the spread. Yeah. If you take away it probably would three have of the turnovers, spread. it's yeah. probably like a 35 to three game. Oh, well, well there's a bunch of field goals in there, so probably yeah. probably 34. 30 or whatever. <laughs> yeah. The only positive spin I can put on the offense is we really got 17 nothing fairly easily. I mean, the first two touchdowns, with the exception of not running for six yards of carry, we actually moved it pretty easily. And he found Burks, he found Sharp. Mm-hmm. And it really wasn't even that contested. Maybe we went even more conservative than we were going to. Mm-hmm. Like we already had a plan of being right. conservative, and then at that point we we're like, okay, this is we're going to be fine. That would be part of my we devil's really, advocate, really shut it down. Is we were extremely vanilla and got even more vanilla holding back, and but and that could also just be very, you know, what well, well, could be two things too. It could be that that you're in a situation where you're going to hold back, but also when you don't have a lot of success, they may have decided well, we're going to have to work on this. And come hell or high water, we're running this, and we're going to see if we can get this to work. And that's a really limited set. And maybe, I don't know, I don't know how constructive they're going to look at a game like this to say, well, we got to work on some things we needed to work on, and it's 10% of our offense eventually. But we got to get this 10% right, and the 10% just didn't look pretty because we're working it and working it and working it. And as you're working the same plays, eventually the defense kind of figures out what you're doing. And so they don't, they give up some things. So they, they could have looked at it to say, like you guys were saying about the deep coverage, they may have, Temple may have been saying, well, we'll gamble or they're just doing this. We're going to go concentrate on this. And even though that was a, the other options were available to them, as an offensive coordinator, you're looking up and saying, we're up by four scores. I'm still going to do what we're not succeeding at. And so you fall into this trap of their they're exactly perform. They're exactly calling a defense against the exact calls you're trying to make offensively, and so it doesn't exactly look real good. I don't know. Yeah, there had to be some uh, conservatism by choice because there was a lot of times that they lined up with no high safeties at all, and we didn't even. And there's single coverage on the outside, and there is nobody on Temple that can run with Brendan Thompson no. on a go route. Right. And or Burks. Especially at post or just about anybody. There weren't any post routes. And right. there are other times where the same scenario, you know, they had the box loaded. And I don't think you normally run, you know, an off guard running play when someone's got seven guys in the box. Right. But we did. So maybe they were just doing it to see if we could do it or to watch individual players. And the other downside is after the Hickman injury, which was was second series. Yeah, it was early. Yeah, I mean we shifted, we moved three offensive linemen. Yeah, to from from the positions that started the game in, and then we brought in a guy at right tackle that obviously doesn't look ready, even though he started twenty plus games at Michigan State. Yeah, that makes zero sense to me. So we really didn't get a chance because, like you said, it was seventeen to three early. But I think he got hurt on that second drive. Um, oh, I know he did because I remember the Burks touchdown. I remember when uh, Jackson Arnold took the snap. It was a bad snap. It was high and left, which we used to always complain about with Gabriel. He was left-handed and it was always high and right. <laughs> and he's having to catch it over here and then turn over here. Well, on the touchdown to Burks, it was a high and left snap for Arnold. And he had to turn and, and make that throw. And <clears throat> that was the out that, route. That was the yeah. second. That was the the second center on the on that drive. So as bad as we feel like the offensive line was, it we won't know how it would have looked if the guys would have got to play their starting positions for the, even the first half before they started tinkering with stuff because they had to tinker right off the bat. That's good. He got the injury. So yeah. I still don't think it's a good offensive line and they, they're going to have to do a ton to get better. But 
maybe maybe we're not as upset with how it looks if all five of those guys play the first half at their position that they started in. I think that's fair. And um and even that wasn't um the five that most thought everybody was thought was gonna yeah. be. So even even the starting five was shifted from what people thought. So that's a good point. I think both of those are good points and it's gonna be a fluid thing going forward for the next few weeks probably to figure out who's where. The other thing, devil's advocate, we don't know much of anything about this Temple team other than they were three and nine. And we know they lost a lot of players, brought in a lot of players. They might have don't give me a only talent they have is on defense. (laughs) I mean, their defense might be a lot better than their offense. Their offense could be their really weak link. So maybe from the same standpoint that we are really down on our offense maybe we ought to check ourselves and not be so high on our defense because maybe they were going up against the real weak unit the the weak component of temple so it goes both ways i noticed for one the defensive tackle number seven was very large and very mobile and had a lot of success against us tonight so they could have enough talent there that they can give you fits and that's what they did I'm not saying that we face the toughest D-line and defense that we're going to face all year or anything like that. It just could be a little bit of the truth is in the middle on both sides. I don't know. Yeah, and you're going to have to think, you know, they know it obviously better than we do day in, day out of practice. But we might have to really adjust, you know, what we do, our system, our play. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Well, one adjustment that they might need to make, I would suggest, listener Mike suggested, they should huddle up. One is they, they got to figure out how to use things. Like they got to figure out if if they're not understanding. We didn't get a chance to test them against the two-minute warning, but they need to understand the two-minute timeout as they're calling it. Yeah. They need to understand just basic strategy. And one of the things is you get to use the microphone to talk to you, you know, the, the headset to talk to your player. We seem to be looking at the sideline a lot. Uh, and, and maybe that's just what's going to happen. But why don't you huddle up? and give them one or two options and come out of that huddle and break and say, you know, it's A or B. And that may be something you develop later on. I don't know, but I think a huddle might be a way to get everybody in sync and on the same page. We, we ran after Brent said we weren't going to do it or said he wasn't so enamored with it. Wasn't it Brent? It's not Latrell's because he doesn't talk to the, um, the public. Mm -hmm. Then he came out and said, we're not going to run hurry up. We ran a bunch of hurry up. You know, yeah, we ran, we ran a, lot, a lot faster than I thought we were going to. Jay asked before we left the house to go walk to the stadium. He said, are you going to have a little tear in your eye for the first time we huddle up? And I was like, yeah, I probably will because that, it'll be a tough to change of pace. And, and you didn't have to and cry. I, and I didn't have to because it didn't happen. They never did it. And I'm fine with, I mean, some of the best offenses in OU history, the, the Sam Bradford offense, the Baker Mayfield offense, Kyler, that was a check with me where – they look to the sideline, they get the play, they they get down in the stance, and then he, he looks over again and decides that they're going to keep that play or, or audible to something else. And obviously the the microphone cuts off at 15 seconds. So maybe that's part of their plan is not huddling up because if you can get to the line at 25 seconds, then once your guys are set, they can they can tell Jackson something in the headset. Because I think the NFL, once they break the huddle, that's when it, it shuts goes, off. Cut, shuts off. Yeah. If I remember right, in college rule, they said it's just going to be the 15 second mark. Yeah. I'm not. Yes. Gonna, and there's right. a gamesmanship there to figure out when you want to talk versus when you don't want the opponent to talk. And so, if you can signal what you want to signal, and you think they're going to have a lot of a lot to say to their linebacker, assuming you know whoever on defense has got it, then. That may be you, you want to get to that point in that last 15 seconds where nobody's got the microphone on and you can signal what you want to signal and they've got to look back and forth. Well, and the wide receivers still have to look. Well, yeah, they're always going to look. Running backs, you know, they're he's moving them from the but left. But they could the look right at Jackson section, yep. if they knew it. What but to do. I also noticed there was two times a game I noticed Jackson do this uh-huh. to hear the headset better, which they probably haven't been able to simulate game atmosphere. Even but the though home field should be home that field loud. And people are quiet, but he still had to do that. So maybe they need to adjust the volume a little bit. Yeah, I very mean, much. True. Because they that's something when, they they're, when that. they're in the when they're in, at the rugby field or if they're right. in the Everest Center that they can't quite simulate what it's going to sound like. Crowd noise. And he doesn't need you know even when it's quiet, 
they made right. he, he had to do that twice so well there are definitely some microphones that need to get adjusted like the uh the ou uh pep guy in the in the timeouts uh, he needs to, yeah down. maybe turn it to off yeah, like, did you notice how many mistakes the oh so the many OU mistakes. announcer made yeah oh total mistakes one he said stop by Peyton Bowen and it was R. Mason Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. yeah. There was he would say uh one of me said first and goal from the six or no first and ten from the six. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's called first and goals, not first and ten. Yeah. Uh um, he talked through several of our plays. Yeah. The band I mean, played a couple of times. Was there was a lot of and not I, I pointed it out. She goes, Is that our normal guy? And I said, Yeah. I said he just made like six mistakes. I said, Well, it is his first game of the season, too. Yeah, it was a lot of but first game I of the season. Surprise, it was well more than the norm. It really was. Well, before we get to praising the defense, and there's going to be a lot of praise, I want to praise our um, longtime supporter and sponsor, Tobacco Exchange. Um, absolutely the best place to shop for cigars in the metro area. Three great locations, Moore, Edmond, and Oklahoma City. And uh, tonight we've got some Olivier's that we're no, smoking. Oliva. Oliva? Yeah, that was Olivier. Okay. Nope. Oliva. No, it's not Olivier. <laughs> Damn Arsenal player. All right. No, it's uh, Oliva Cigars. Tell and us more about Oliva. At the more location only, this month, if you buy a box of Oliva, you get a leather cigar case and an eight-count cigar sampler. So um, I can't can't complain about Oliva. They're, it's a good stuff. Yeah, we, we we broke into the pack of eight, and they had the little uh, – uh, they had a bunch of giveaways there at yeah. the shop. It was really nice. It was a nice little setup. So stop by the more store, take advantage of that, and then shop the – thorough deep humidor room that's just that's yeah. just great they got so much going on in there and i've been i've been having i've been smoking cigars for a little about 20 years now 21 maybe and uh i used to just go to the 63rd may location because okay. that's all there was and then they've expanded since and price wise i mean you just can't beat them no you really can't you know what you also can't beat at least tonight is ou's defense that defense just came ready to play that was it from the get-go, they were locked in. They were wreaking havoc. It was it, – it wasn't – I didn't see any gaping problems or holes. There wasn't a guy running free that the quarterback just didn't see. It There just weren't options. It was great. Lots of penetration. The D-line was very strong as expected and as advertised. Everybody got some on the defensive line. Everybody just got, got action and plays. I – Six turnovers, and I'm going to argue every one of those was a created turnover. It was action on the ball. One of the things that I pointed out at the time, and, and then later when we were talking about it, you guys agreed then too, was that that first interception was one that we have seen them drop time after time. And every Grinch speed D offense, defense, they would drop that because they were never expecting a ball to land near them much less in their hands, it, and it. he did not have time to do much with that. It just came out of nowhere, and all of a sudden, he's it's in his hands, and he made the catch, and just really, really impressed. What did you guys think about the entire defensive performance? I think just top to bottom, it was great. I mean, it's that we talk about the preparedness and <clears throat> the dominance. It's not like we just saw that from a first or second team, right? Mm -hmm. It's We saw it across the board, and yeah, I know the the latter half of the of the group, the third, fourth, maybe even some fifth string guys that got in there gave up some plays uh, down the stretch. But overall, like that's ex what what we showed on the field tonight was exactly what we wanted to see. I think it's exactly what I wanted to see. It was pure dominance. Um, and what's crazy, I mean, after the first drive or two, we didn't have the first unit out there cohesively. No, a lot of together the rest of the game. I mean, it was just well. We never, we never played Woody. He right. didn't play. Woody Gentry didn't play. Didn't play. Gentry didn't play. Um, you rotate. We were rotating Billy and Danny out a ton. So our two vets that are that are the kind of staples of the defense were making a lot of rotations. Several third downs. Danny wasn't on the field. Yeah, and so, and and, it, and they his the guys behind him played extremely well. Kobe played amazingly mm -hmm. well. Um, Lewis Carter came in, made some plays. So. I don't know that that group holistically was kind of the saving grace for the for the evening, in my opinion. Um, for everything that we saw as a negative on the offense, I can counteract that with something positive that we saw from the defense. Um, flying around the field, I mean, it was just suffocating. Which is it was truly a suffocating defense. Yeah, which is exactly what we've been asking for. In fact, so I would say if you were to look at that, those two units, 
it looked like a first game for an offense that has some question marks. Mm -hmm. It looked like not a midseason game, but it looked like a team that had faced several opponents already on defense. They were crisp. Yep. And the thing that you can take away that I think is really positive. It's still and, vanilla. It's still vanilla. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. They, they were completely it's vanilla. Not blitz, one blitz. Right? Yeah. Not is. one guy. I mean, the most Dolby they had. Came off the edge once or twice. Yeah, once or twice. And he got home. They, so did, uh, what's it, Osamigo? What's, oh, Osamigo, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he had, he reminded me, he had one play where he looked like uh, Oboe out there. He just came down the left side, just right around the edge yep. and, and blew him up. Well, a couple times you would have um, Kip and, and and Kobe came up and filled a gap, and they were just obviously going to put pressure. It wasn't really a blitz as much as we're just bringing pressure. That's about the only thing you saw that was creative, for sure. Everything else was just line up and play a position, and they were extremely effective. Well, and the one uh, the, the play of the night for me was the uh... – the Kendall Dilby pass breakup that led to the Kenai Walker interception. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you look before the play, the quarterback hot routes that receiver before the play, looks at him, hot routes him, says, basically, this is the matchup I want. I'm going at you. And Dilby just is all over it the whole yep. time. So Perfect cheetah. Tips uh, the ball up and yeah. thinks that it hits the ground. And he's yeah. like, oh, you know. He's upset and looks at the sideline. Meanwhile, Kenai Walker's got the ball and he's running past him yeah. <laughs> on the interception. So – it. I don't know. It's it's extremely well played game from the defense, and something that I can I'm going to have to hang my hat on because of the opposite side of the of the ball. So and uh, as far as just watching the defensive line, I think uh, Jaden Jackson, if you noticed, he was in the backfield a, a lot. lot. He wasn't registered with a lot of, of tackles made or anything like that. But there Maybe were one there were up. there were plays yeah. where he was having to come backwards he right. had gotten so far right deep into the and there were only a couple of times where they made a critical mistake where i would say they got too deep one time they crossed and really knocked each other down and the quarterback was able to step forward and escape but most of the time the pressure was just the way you'd like to see it if anything they unexpectedly were farther downfield than they thought they were going to be yeah, he even made a play where they it wasn't quite a screen, but it was just a yep. little dump pass. It's but he play. came back and made the tackle. Great I play. mean, he, right. he penetrated, yeah. he read it, he said, oh, I got to get back, yeah. and then ran the guy down. So he was impressive. Yeah, they they didn't bite. They didn't um, – you didn't see that problem that you saw we've seen in years past where you're getting good penetration, but that's because there's a guy 10 yards deep, 5 yards right. deep, who's wide open and is going to run for another 15. It was never like that a lot. A lot of gang tackling. Very few yak yards yeah. at all. Time. Oh, yeah, it very, was... very few. Great solid tackling. It's uh, it's so funny. When you do it so well, Yeah, it's just now registering me in this yeah. moment that we didn't have any of the missed tackles, any of the whiffs, any of the stuff that you criticize. Like, it's just good form tackling and bringing a guy to the ground. Yeah. I hope we don't have to just qualify this with it was Temple. But, man, just watching, watching the push up front from the yeah. two middle guys, no matter who it was. Halton was in there. Jaden Jackson, David Stone got in there. Oh man, Grayson Halton was. I mean, we didn't really talk about Dominic Williams, right? And oh, and he was he, very he solid. He made a play, really great well. first drive. Yeah, he got in the backfield, and I don't think it. I think it was a tackle for loss. I don't think it was a sack. But did we see much of him? Well, in the first couple of drives, they did exactly what you know Jackson and and Williams were gonna do, and it just it just muddied the whole middle. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so they were they tried running the football, and it was just there was just nowhere to go. Yeah. yeah. So and, and like they said, and they did Temple, look, but man, well, but get... they didn't look horrible too. That quarterback for Temple, he he made some good. I don't know if they were uh, true option reads, um, zone reads, and different things that are, um, uh, uh, you know, run pass option or or um, uh, what am I thinking of? Like, RPOs. RPOs. And he said run pass option. Yeah. So he <laughs> he was doing he was effective in doing that. He was also you know. It wasn't clear who had the ball. He, you know, it wasn't like one of these guys where it's so clear from our vantage point. Right. It was where he's doing a good job. So, I don't know. It is Temple. It's, but it's also not Missouri State or somebody that's a upper tier but not top notch FCS school. Yeah. It's, um, it's not Maine. It's not Maine. Um, it it's a school with D one athletes, and so it, you know, I hope we're not qualifying it later down the road. 
but man, it looks good. Well, you did what you're supposed to do. You I mean, there, there's been years we've played the temples and didn't have six sacks and didn't wreck havoc with without bringing oh, pressure. Yeah, plenty of those games. So, and for what it's worth, I n- never was doubtful about the defense. No, I had yeah. confidence all the way from you know I came into the game with confidence. But they substantiated that confidence all the way through. So at no point did I really fear. In fact, the only time I might have been fearful is when we're running, I mean, three and four deep. Yeah. Although we brought some starters back in to stop them from I mean, getting to one, the end zone. And we move them backwards 30 yards. Yeah, I mean, at one point, the only, quote, starter that we had sometimes out there was Kanai Walker still at one corner spot. Yeah. And then everybody else, you had Boganowski. And there's Malone Party got a bunch of play. And you know, Stone, really a couple of linebackers that aren't even know their names. A couple of white guy linebackers. It was <laughs> it was it was very, very impressive all around. And then apparently in the locker room post game, Brent Venables gave a game ball to some mysterious guy. I don't think I've ever even heard of. Was yeah, what's that guy's name? Zach Alley. Has anybody they, seen that guy? I looked him up. Who? I looked him up in the public records. Like, We're actually this? paying this guy like a million bucks. Ow. Yeah. I mean, he's what got does he some, look like? He's got some, t- I don't know. I've never heard his voice. I haven't either. He's got some title. It's DC. What's a DC? I don't know what a DC is. I yeah. They got to talk to him tonight. Yeah. Finally. Did he talk? Okay. I didn't yeah. see that. Okay, good. Does he, does he have like a little Mickey and Mouse and voice? And or what's, what's going on? Apparently, he called the whole game too. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really impressive. The whole game. I mean, if there's truth to that, and I think, I don't think they're going to lie. He called the whole game, and that's that's awesome. He that's called, really good. He called a four-two-five cover two every play. <laughs> every, play. <laughs> every play. Well, you know, there was he, a point where he, he called linebackers once. in there once. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Well, I saw a couple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there was a couple was. points where yeah. had three linebackers. Yeah, and, and they can. I got a little excited. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, basically, he just said, "I'm going to call this one play. I'm going to say, do it again. Yeah, do it again. Do it again." It it was really impressive. The other thing that was impressive, and this transitions nicely because he's a defender that we've talked about positively and negatively would be how crisp the scoop and score was out of uh Panic. Panic, Jerry and Panic, yeah. And he picked it up like the running back that he was in high school and he and made a move. Guy. Well, he had to pick it up without falling over for one. Right. Which is not something I mean, we always a see. A lot of defensive guys, they stumble and bumble and which I criticize the usually ball to like land on it because right. you know you can't do this. But he did a good job picking it up and then juking a guy and walking in the end zone. And the other thing he did, he did start to celebrate. I think I give him the out that he probably knew he was free. He's he's at about the one yard line and he's celebrating holding his arms out, but he didn't drop the ball. <laughs> and I looked down to uh, to see made a double take he had held the ball as he loops in the end zone to make sure there's none of that silly drop the ball celebrating nonsense yeah. so it, all of that was really good he looked very very crisp and strong on that it play in like several been, special teams a ton players. of time ripping balls out of, yeah of guys arms because there must be some poor guy like, like whose said, job it is to stand there and on in the practice field and get the ball. Like said, none, of, none of these were just gimmies. They weren't just Mm-mm. running and drop the ball that seemed, you know, happens sometimes, or you run to the back of a lineman with your elbow and, and it pops out. No, it was, it was right before these guys are going down, the ball's getting ripped out and just flying up in the air and, and done the right way. Like if, if you remember back to the, again, to the Grinch defenses and others who we've seen where they're doing this rip, rip, rip stuff where they're really no cohesive. No, no, no form tackle. Get him to where you want him. Now you get the option. Not as he's running away from you. Yeah, the speed, yeah. D, exactly. the speed D be trying to rip the ball out as he got 17 more yards. Right. Yeah. Like, as, you, yeah. as he's carrying you yeah. for another this 17 yards. Three guys so, tackling yeah, the ones and one guy punching or ripping and the ball coming it out. Was, it was very, very impressive. And one way to look at that is there were a couple that we had to look at the replay to see who it was that caused the fumble. Mm-hmm. Because there's two guys. Danny is in on one and he makes the initial hit. But it's um was it Kip Lewis or who Kobe, was it? Kobe, Kobe yeah. who makes who actually makes the the fumble yep. who creates the fumble. I mean that's so. that's middle school football. It's perfect. First guy makes the, starts to make the tackle, and the other guy, guy comes, comes in, in for the, the ball. ball. Yeah, yep. and it's what you want. It it's what you draw up on paper. But it's one thing to draw it up on paper or read it in a book. It's another to actually execute yeah, it and get it done. And they got it done. Yep. So that's all very impressive. Um. I, I don't know. Let's let's look forward a little bit. We've got probably 
games that are more challenging than we wanted them to be. And now they're going to be more challenging. We're going to realize they're going to be more challenging yep. than we expected Feel with Houston and Tulane. So we, we've got a lot to work on to be crisp enough to win. I don't want to ever, the way that we depended on offense and we were doing that for years and years where we knew our offense was going to score. And if we had a kick return with a, with a, a bad block and they moved us back to the 10 yard line. We're like, great, more yards for us. <laughs> we don't want that anymore, but we also don't want to rely on our defense the way we relied on that offense. We want to have a complete balanced team that goes both ways. So hopefully we got a little possum visiting us. It's this, is that Charlie or is that Chuck? I don't know. It might be Carl. It looks like Chuck. Um, so what we want is a team that can perform and get the job done on both facets of the ball. And we're going to obviously fold in special teams too, but let's not rely on field goals either. I don't want to be beaten t- uh, Tulane or or Houston with a last minute field goal mm-hmm. or going into half having kicked one. And you're saying, wow, if we could have turned those three field goals into touchdowns, we'd ha- really have a ball game here. Yeah, I mean, I, that's what I was think thinking going to be when we were coming sorry. down to, if we're going to cover the spread or not, I was talking to Nolan. I was like, you know, Two of those field goals should have been touchdowns. Yeah, like you just you're on the six yard line. You should have a foot on one of them getting penalties. Um, you, well, one of them went right through um, Hester's hands. Yeah, there. yeah. You just cannot uh, the, the crossing route. But no, it was in all, the corner. It's oh, southwest oh, corner. It locks the oh, 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 the, it yeah, the, it, it just did the go route. I think the, the but go it route. Just, yes. it just literally went. It was a right, great throw. Yeah. It was a perfect throw. A great throw. throw. Yeah. A lock so would have been toast. But it was Hester yeah. then. Was it the same drive yeah, so that he did the the, the it's in a route? Deep, it's a it's a deep end slant, and I mean I know there's guys around, but there's not anybody. He's going to catch the ball. It's going to be a 15 plus yard reception, and you, I'm sure he's thinking, I'm got enough space, I can make a move. I might be able to go up the field, and of course yeah, he, he drops the ball. His, he just took his eyes. You off. can't do classic, that. Classic. You cannot do that. So that's something to work on, and that'll come back to bite us in later games. Um, I mean, he probably hasn't been getting as many reps, you know, just last early in week. the year until this last week, you know, when Anderson's going to be out. Yeah. Andrew Anthony's back. So he probably started taking more reps this week than he had the previous couple of weeks. Farouk obviously took a lot of reps who unfortunately broke a bone in his foot. He'll be out six to eight weeks. That's, yeah. a, that's a pretty big loss now. That's starting to stack up in the He had one catch for 47 court. yards. Um, longest it's offensive great play throw too. Uh, for us. Um so hopefully these guys. Well, hopefully Anderson's back for this next game, but but hopefully with whatever it is, if it's reps in practice or whatever, hopefully they start executing, and we're not dropping footballs, especially when you're wide open. Um, what do you guys think outlook wise? You give us a little preview. Houston's coming up. I think Houston and Tulane aren't going to be necessarily nail biters, but I think they're going to be closer than what we probably thought a week ago. What do you think the spread will be? For the Houston game, we we don't have an opening. We're kind of spread. behind because playing this game on Friday, we don't get to see any of the other teams play until tomorrow. Right, you know, we don't get to see including Houston, Houston. Houston. Yeah, until tomorrow, that kind of throws things off from a normal game because we would have already seen the outcome of right Houston versus UTEP. You know, we could say, oh well, Houston only beat UTEP by seven; they were given two and a half, but they didn't look that great, but still won. Or if they end losing. Or an hour, just kind of guessing, like, uh, I wonder how it's going to go. Yeah, um, 13. 13? Yeah. So what would you have said before what you saw tonight? Not sure. So my thinking is, I 13, God, I hope it's more than that, but it might really be that. I think that we lost a touchdown, though. I think if it was 13, it was going to be 20 or 21. Um, I mean, he, here's the deal. Houston is still a power of 14. Right. I mean, they are a Big 12 opponent. And so, for me, preseason, when everyone just glazes over that game, right? That's they got real athletes. They got real football players. And a head coach. Yeah, and a head coach, yeah. So, it's I, I never thought that game was going to be as, just as, you know, chalk it up as an easy double. Should we win? Yes, we should. We, we have significantly more athletes than they do. But it, I still think it's going to be a fairly tough game. Well, I... I think that it's not unreasonable to say that there's a chance one of the two games, Houston, Tulane, so we haven't seen these teams play, so I'm going to, you know, give myself a little bit of the out, say one of the two of them 
it would very well be more difficult than two of our SEC opponents, for sure, yeah. Auburn and even on the road in South Carolina. Yeah, you never know. You don't know. You just don't know. And and they are, you know, in both cases, well coached. And, well, Tulane, who does Tulane, where did their coach come from? That's a good question for a pod two weeks ago. Yeah, I don't know. It is good. But so in <laughs> both cases, well, you, you got – like you're saying, um, athletes that are probably at a higher level than Temple. Power four for what it's worth out of Houston, coming out of a, a, a very good market. And you've got to think they've got some some key athletes in key positions. And that can be enough to wreak havoc, especially if they've got a couple of studs on defense. That might be all it takes to give our offense lots of trouble. So that it's wor- I'm worried. Were you guys worried at all when – Hawkins came in that if he just absolutely lit it up, then there would be some murmuring going on. Yeah, I was. I was Honestly, not. I, I told my family that I said they hadn't seen Hawkins. And I watched some of his high school stuff. I said he's he can be an electric runner. So oh no, he can definitely with as, with as bad as our offensive line was, and by that point we probably got a bunch of second string offensive line guys in. I said, you watch, he's going to come in and they're going to run him a couple plays and you're going to see that he's got it. And he really just had the one 20 yard run that got called back on a holding. He had a couple other runs but as well. If he had, if he had thrown some just absolute darts. Yeah. I mean, he, or something. He's got a cannon because he threw a couple. I could runs. see a little bit of a, yeah. you know, rumbling, but. But I didn't want to see, you know, Jackson came out of us 37 to three. I want Hawkins to do well but i didn't want to see him throw a 45 <laughs> yeah. yard touchdown yeah. perfect oh, i wouldn't worry about that i'm not well, gonna, i don't i'm not gonna I take that think, yeah. as a well i, I just didn't want to hear it on the radio think, and be what well, did they start the right guy because this other guy he's i don't all think that happened I, I don't know that i saw happened. anything from jackson tonight that concerned him. i agree I, he didn't put the ball i agree i, I think, think he had an really, off day he played really smart though i think he had an off day he might have a little bit of 25 but that was probably drops. five drops. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and he didn't throw anything that was just like, oh, gosh, I should that have done true. that. We talked or, about that from the Arizona um, game. What else was there? I, I think he ran at the right times. Yeah, I, I do, know. too. He's, and ran pretty smart. He, he he took some contact he didn't have to take. He stepped out of bounds nicely, but but got upfield smartly on another and another one on, on the sideline. The first fourth down when they spread everybody out. It was perfect. I didn't understand why they didn't have a linebacker in the middle. Yeah. Because it looked plain as day. Yeah, everybody knew. It was the quarterback draw all day yeah. long. Yeah. And he picked up, I don't know, like seven yards or something like that. Yeah. Fourth and one. But and really could have broken for more. Everybody was wide. You knew what he was doing. And they did come back to it later when Tatum was in there. I was wanting to see like a pitch play or when they ran the option with Tatum later. Um, on it was a fourth and there was a third and three, I think, and they With ran Jackson. They ran Jackson yeah. and he got stuck. Yeah, because they saw it coming. Yeah, and I I knew that when the, by their setup, I knew that they could tell that. that was, I'm right. surprised we didn't audible out of it. Yeah, based on the way they set it up, because right. it looked to me like they were waiting for that play. Right. Obviously, so I thought that Jackson's play was good enough. I I didn't fear that at all, but. As you say that, I think one, and when you mentioned the option, Hawkins ran the option perfectly on that pitch to Tatum. He runs it yep. into the end zone. That was that was a nice throwback to recognize the 74-75 yep. team that we recognized. So that was really beautiful. Um, we started off with a Jeff Levy reverse first play of the game. Yeah, we did. We had a little razzle-dazzle. I like that. Didn't go for much, no, but I liked it. No, they Just like Jeff Levy. Well, the problem is with yards. Temple – Temple's not good enough to pursue, and so you're so fast. Those guys aren't fast enough to probably even move, and they to just weren't. On they weren't going to over pursue on anything. So, I'm not. I was never worried about Hawkins, but I just I, didn't want to hear it. No, but after should, the discourse that we heard, no, with, the, with the they should have kept Gabriel right. Let let Arnold go because then you have Hawkins behind because he'd done well in practice and all this other stuff. I didn't want to hear that on the radio this week. Well, there's a reason I don't listen to the that. radio, um, and I, I'm not interested well, in people you're, that you're sitting at a desk that, and you're that listen podcast. or call into the radio because they they don't have anything. And they to still add. will, which is funny. And they still will. That's so. Funny. But as you say that, I'm thinking mm-hmm. with what we saw out of our offense, with what we saw out of our offensive line, an argument could be made that to make the best move for what this team to for success this season with this team. It might be Hawkins 
and I'm not arguing for that. But with his yeah. ability to run, yeah, to avoid the rush, to avoid the rush, but Arnold can run too, and Arnold can run too. He's not as quick. But it's it's like if you were just saying, okay, forget about the future. You've only got this one year, and you've got to maximize your wins this year with what we've got. I fear that that is actually the formula to win. I don't think it just is. based on the offensive line, not based good. on the offensive yeah. line, based on our weaknesses that supports it. But they'll but, start working, like I said, later in the game, they were rolling Jackson out more. And like I said, the receivers weren't getting as open as I thought they should have on some of them. But right. But he still he still found the guy by continuing his rollout. Well, one thing I would say is if you're Seth Latrell, you've got to look at it as you never want to put a guy in a position of, of risk, but you're not trying to wrap him up in bubble wrap and protect him. That's Carl. What you're that's Carl. Thanks. And yeah, Carl's faster. Um so you don't, what you're not, what you don't want to do is try to protect him because you don't have anyone to back him up. We are not where we were two years ago. Right now, if we, you know, you go ahead and run your offense with Jackson Arnold, and if something awful happens and he gets hurt, you've got a solid backup who can come in and get the job done to help to help your season. Um, he, he, you know, by game eight, game nine, let's really hope. It would be a pretty big loss to lose Jackson. Well, you're not trotting Davis Bevel out there to. But you're not. Yeah. Spread out wide. You're, I mean, yeah, you're Johnson, your third string. And yeah, he also he started. Play. He started a full season at Texas. He started full season at Nebraska. He should be effective. Yes. I still think if it's if it comes down to the Tennessee game or Texas or somebody and Arnold goes down, I think Casey Thompson's a blow. I do not want to see this Just come to fruition. Defense. No, I just think he. I don't be, think that'll happen. I take the other side. No way. I, I think it'll be Hawkins. Chance. He's played in way, way more big games, and he's got way more composure than Hawkins will have. Mm. Hawkins is still a true freshman quarterback. Well, it's he it's morbid. I didn't realize he was that big. He's a big dude. Mm -hmm. That's what you think. I mean, relative. Yeah, I do. I mean, I don't think Arnold's that big, and he's not as big as Arnold. You think so? No, he, I think he's more slender than that. Yeah, he's shorter. I, I think I mean, that's bigger than Kyler. Yeah. But that's not yeah. saying much. Yeah. Right. But Kyler was deceptively big uh, and deceptively Thick. strong. Thick. Bigger than he looked. Yeah. Yeah. He was not deceptively tall. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I would take the morbid bet and I would take it uh, if it comes to Tennessee and everything plays out and then in Tennessee game he goes down and you got to put a backup in, I would bet it's Hawkins. Are you, do you have a lead? Like, do I know something? No, like, no, do you know? Like, you have, do you a, have lead a lead in the game? Trying to protect the lead. Oh. You have a lead in the game. Casey Thompson's your quarterback. No, I don't think so. I think, it, no, I think we it's Hawkins. We won't have to find out. I guess Hawkins all the yeah, way. Yeah, we're not going to have to find out. But yeah. it's, there's, I just think there's no chance. Hopefully we're up by 28 going into. So I don't understand that. Quarter. Are you just trying to develop Hawkins, you're saying, at this point? And he's your second, he's your number two is because you're going to give him reps for development? Okay. He looked fast running tonight against Temple. It's great. We can't go off of that. He's he's a true freshman quarterback. But by that game, he will have had potentially a lot more reps. No, both in he's practice not hardly have any reps. He's and, not going to hardly get on the field against Houston. Tonight. And he'll he'll have a little time on the field. I'm saying reps in practice. Hey, Thompson's got to be your third string in practice, right? Maybe, but he doesn't. It's like a seventh year of football. I don't know. I'll take that bet. I hope it doesn't come to that in any way, shape, or form. But I think it'd be Hawkins. If you're nursing the lead in the fourth quarter against Tennessee and your quarterback goes down, Casey Thompson's coming in the game. I'm saying what they're going to do. 110%. But, but Hawkins gives you so much more. A chance of, of making a freshman mistake. I mean, he gives you so much more diversity yeah. of what you can do with him. Because he can move. Because Thompson, Thompson can't, can't move can't. after all of his injuries. I mean, if it comes down and you need to run an option to seal a game, Hawkins is your guy. Who do you think you between us? I see both sides. I understand Jay's point just I based on experience. No, I totally understand but his point. If I, it's 28 21 with five minutes left in the game, Arnold gets hurt, and you need somebody to come get a couple first downs and try to ice this thing. I can see going with Hawkins just because he gives you the ability to run away from the defense to like hit a corner just to get six yards. Whereas Thompson other than handing the ball off, it, is he going to get you the throw that's if you need a ten yard throw for first down? Yeah, I think he'll. I, I think he'll make that better than Hawkins would. Yeah. I think he would make smarter choices that Hawkins says. 
I think he would make a smarter choice. He threw for about 500 yards on us two years ago. He did. <laughs> two years ago. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, well, our cover was bare. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, it's probably not going to come to that. Yeah. Let's so not, Let's not put things there. No, let's not. Let's not make that happen. So, I don't know. Um, we what covered about, the spread. What about game-related stuff? Did we go over any little Toby Key thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, let's, let's oh, the surrounding let's atmosphere. Some thoughts on Fan atmosphere. Not just the play. But yeah, what did y'all think about a Friday crowd? I thought it was about what I thought it would be. Yeah. It showed up well, though. It was solid. It was yeah. solid, but weak. There were a lot of... um there. That sellout crowd had a lot of ghost seats, uh, ghost runners on yeah. mm-hmm. in the section 300 or whatever that is on it the east side. In late. It, the, the, three, the upper deck of the east side never filled in. I thought the students showed out pretty well. The students and showed out in, great. Yeah, I thought sure. they did pretty Student well. Sold up, uh, showed up great. Um, I would say that I'm, I continue to just be very disappointed by a lot of things as a fan that you experience. I go up to the top and I'm walking through a puddle of water. I mean, a big puddle of water. Um, I, the concession stand, they ran out of everything in the early third quarter. Um, it was this the same show that we always see as far as all that goes. I thought that security was not SEC ready. It was still the same joke getting in. Yeah, if anybody um, doesn't have a ticket, you can just you, go through the yeah, metal detectors and then just walk in. Just walk in. There's no reason to use your ticket. It's, it's silly. And, but mm-hmm. part of where... I understand where they're coming from because maybe pragmatically they realize how difficult it is to, to transact a ticket because Ava's trying to get in to somewhere else and she and she had forgotten that she didn't have a ticket that I had all the tickets on my phone. So I'm trying to get on to transfer the ticket. It's just impossible. I mean, it, it's as if there isn't an Internet that exists. So I that was not going to happen. I had better 5G coverage for this game than I've ever had. Well, I never was. Well, the 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 5G was all fine. It was the OU ticket Sooner Sports that mm-hmm. was not. It was out to lunch and could not transact. Could not get that done. Um, so it was still a, a colossally long line to get in. Uh, I don't know. Lots of things that are just like they're not up to where we want them to be. The Let's Go OU chant can die. I hate that. That's, it's so it's, bad. It's so it's so dumb. We it's have so, it's so Boomer good. Sooner. Yeah. What did they do that once? Just yeah. at the start of the game. At the start of the game. That's it. And we they, don't need that. And we don't need it at that point. Yeah. I mean, they're forcing it. If you're going to try to pump, you know, pump the crowd up, having the guy try to explain this corner do let's, this corner do go. Yeah. And oh. It's horrible. It's so bad. Yeah, Boomer Sooner. Have the, the cheerleaders hold the signs up. Boomer, the whole east side says Boomer. Sooner, the whole west side does Sooner. It doesn't get any better than that. It works. It, and it doesn't Everybody get knows the words. Yes, you don't have exactly. to explain it. It's we, Boomer and Sooner. We don't it's have not, to have a script. Go. Oh, it's it's ridiculous. It is totally ridiculous. They, they tried to force it on us last year. We didn't like it from day one. And we thought, maybe they realize it's dumb as a box of rocks. Let's not do this again. And here it is, first game. Let's try it again. Let's roll it out. <laughs> makes no sense. That makes no sense. I mean, if we're going to just get in a rant session, the volume continues to not make any sense. The constant noise makes no sense. I don't need every time out to be filled with someone screaming at me with a microphone. Um, I know they want to recognize sponsors, and that's fine. I know they're going to try and get different little segments in. You... You get all the fans who love to look at the Heisman, uh, you know, pick which one has the magic number on it and, you know, find the solo cup and all that. And that's fine. And that wasn't that loud. But everything else is just constant noise, which is it's annoying. It's it's exceptionally annoying. You can't converse with the people around you. You can't focus like we don't need to be told to be enthusiastic. We know what to be enthusiastic for. Don't tell me I'm supposed to yell and be loud. I know what I'm supposed to be yelling and when we're up by a significantly comfortable lead almost covering the spread we're in the third quarter it's naturally going to die down you can keep it going but it doesn't at one point he he, it was i think it was in the fourth quarter and he wanted us to be really loud and i'm looking around the stands i'm like this is um there's well, twenty thousand people left yeah i mean it, there's maybe 40 i mean it was a, all you guys it was a good oklahoma wait stance. Until the final whistle it was like Who it cares was what the score is. It was a good Oklahoma State crowd, but it was not. It it, it is frustrating that people leave. But know, it's it's late. The game's in hand. I'm not going to blame people for leaving. I don't understand it exactly. Yeah, myself. there's no time for hype. Um, there's we don't need the hype. We don't need it. We're gonna get we're gonna get hyped. I guarantee you, we're gonna be as hyped as hyped can be when we're playing Tennessee 
and Alabama, and it's a tight game and all of that. But don't tell me to be hyped in a 37-3 game against Temple. I don't no. need it. No. And they the, the players shouldn't need it either. No, I, exactly. I mean, it's just – it's full circle. I don't do, know. Do you think when – so they went between the third and fourth quarter to do the Toby Key thing. They turned the lights out. Do you think that affects the coaches on both sides of the field – trying to talk to their players I would about what's going to happen because it gets fairly dark in there when the lights were It gets were very off. dark. I was kind of surprised that that they go to, to that extent. Immediately, too. It dark. Like, yeah. no Third quarter goes anything. off, and yeah. then boom, lights out. Yeah. And the players are running to the sideline. I'm just waiting for somebody to start tripping Yeah, because they can't see where they're going. Well, did you, did you see when, when Selman came out that he did trip the camera over the camera? Yeah. He got one more sack in. Because of the smoke. <laughs> yeah, because of the smoke. He was laughing about it. Yeah. No, I thought. I did like the new thing that they started this year with bringing the away team out first. I did, too. I always thought it was weird that you get, oh, you takes the field, everybody goes crazy, and the other team comes out and people boo. I've always thought that your team should come out second. That's better. Because you're getting the hype from yeah. that because they've already done the coin toss. Right. right. At that point. No, I guess. No, they haven't done they haven't the coin, coin toss. toss yet, but but they rushed that. Boy, that came they, fast. Yeah, they did. did we win? I know we got the ball in the second I'm half. assuming did we, we won. defer? I did I didn't even see it. It was so fast. I didn't even see it. Yeah, I don't know. So they didn't, they didn't need to do something on a microphone by the ref. Like, right. You know, you watch the Super Bowl and it's like, oh, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever and they put the coin. It doesn't need to be that extent, but I well, would they, like to know who wins the toss. Did they recognize a kid or, or anything like what? they usually do? They usually walk the a kid out. Soon I didn't see any of that. I don't know. I didn't see it. Didn't well, see I did it, like but... the band going down there, and they run between the band. I like how they got the schooner wasn't... out there, and the schooner ran first. I, I thought, oh, that was good. Yeah, that Their was better. timing wasn't perfect on everything, but the pregame video, the hype video was good. Their movement into everything sequentially was good. They got the scene setter going right at the right time. They started the band a second early because they were still in the middle of the the scene setter ending. And but the band it it flowed. It flowed pretty well. It wasn't crisp and perfect, but it, it flowed really first well. First game of the year. Yeah. First game of the year. For first game, yeah. For first <laughs> game, it, it, that went well. Not a lot of complaints. I, the Toby Keith song selection, courtesy red, white, and blue. It's fine, but boo. it went way too long. I'm sorry. I know I'm in the minority. You People love that. Cool, they yeah. went crazy. I don't like the song. I don't like the image. I mean, that that gets into politics and all kinds of crap. Yeah. I thought I think it's a trash song. I think it's a trash. I don't like it. I don't like anything about it. They're recognizing Toby Keith, and that's great. I thought it was nice to bring his family out. Um, it felt rushed. It felt very rushed, and it was four full minutes, but it felt rushed. And then they, one thing that was weird is they stopped everything to introduce the family, and then they start it back up, and that was kind of awkward. Mm-hmm. And they want us all sing along, and people do, and I mean. This would be my old man rant or whatever it's going to be. They got real enthused and sang along with the song, and they were rah, rah, rah with that song. Much more than they were for almost anything else going on in the third or fourth quarter, it seemed like. But, um, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Um, that tells me, though, it will be a different song every, yes. every home game. Yeah, sure. They're not going to just use that song. Sure they're not. not. Yes, hopefully not. So, you know, I don't know. It, I, I'll put it this way. All of that was as weird to me and not what I want image wise as the flyover was. I'm sorry. I this is not 1920. I'm not that impressed by some by a, a flying machine in the air. These prop planes that fly over, that's just not impressive to me. It's just not. It's not gonna get me riled up. We've got an Air Force base right down the street. If you want to <laughs> You want to fly some planes? Let's get some planes. Let's fly let's some get a fighter, fighter planes. I'm let's always get a B1. wondering. Let's get some 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 engines with some power. If that's what we Tinker, want to project. You've got Altus Air Force Base. Let's, let's run some planes, baby. Why are we not having? I mean, those guys have to have flight time, right? So why is there not some S sixteens flying? Anything. Over? Send like, them over. What something are we doing? With some speed and some some power. Something that looks like I couldn't fly it. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Something like that really gets it going. Watching this slow propeller driven plane go by, it's like, well, I see that every day. That's nothing. Just wait for the hot air balloons. I mean, yeah, that's, that's what's <laughs> well, and, then, and then they get their own show at the in the third quarter. Right. Like those people who flew over those problems. Right. We got to salute them and like thought, they just won the war or something. I thought maybe after the SEC celebration where they did the drone stuff. Right. Right. Where's Why the was drones? that a one time thing? Why didn't they at least 
at one point during the game after it's dark, yeah, they could have flown up just the drones to spell out OU, yes. and everybody would have went nuts. Yes, it didn't have to be we the whole the show. Technology. They literally, it's it could have been thirty seconds of those drones fly up, and you don't know they're there, right? And then all of a sudden dark. they're there, and then all of a sudden you see OU flashing. That would be a, cool. A football flying across or whatever. They did it already. Yes. Is it just that? They had to pay somebody to come do that, and they don't want to do that for every game. But it's only a multi-million dollar profiting event. <laughs> yeah. Now, maybe they're waiting on that for the bigger games, but I guess I could see an element of you that. You can't do it in the daytime. You can't do so it in the daytime, so you're limited. You only have so many games. Yeah. So, I mean, I could see them saying, let's wait and have a climactic moment in a bigger game. But it's like, we're going to do fireworks. You know, it's not like you say we're not going to do fireworks because yeah. we want the fireworks in the big game. I mean, come on, do do the stuff. Bring it out. Let's let's see the show. Um, if anything, this is a game where you had you struggled to sell tickets. You sell deep discount tickets. You had, a, I mean, I'm looking around. You're seeing a lot of people attending this game who don't attend a lot of games. And you're trying to introduce them to the to the to the team, to the brand and all of that. Give them the full show. Tell them to come back. Give them a reason to come back. And it's not like you're holding back saying, well, these guys didn't actually pay up for the, the big show. No, bring it all out. Let's see it all uh, and yeah. advertise it. I have a complaint about my new section. Tell us about the section. I went from 16 to 20. I'm in the same it's row. It's only four more. It's only four sections. Even though Josh and Angie think that I would just move like 50 feet. But it was four full sections over. Um is it, it doesn't seem like I, it's four. It's it was four. four. I had a lot of people, <laughs> and I've never had this go on in my previous section. There was there was empty seats in front of me and to the left of me, and I saw more people, and even the section to the right was pretty full. I saw people just walking up the stands. Is anybody sitting there? Is anybody sitting there? And then just trying to fill in empty spots. Some of them were students. I don't know if the student section was overcrowded or not. It and looked they, pretty crowded. didn't want to sit there, but th some of this was going on in the second quarter. The people were just randomly walking through the stands looking for places to sit. Well, they all your, got in for free. They took yeah, Jay's advice. Your ticket has a seat, has a, a right. section, a row, and a seat number. Right. Why are you not sitting there? Well, if, you're if distracting things, me from watching the game because it's just one after another. People filing in randomly. Oh, is anybody sitting here? Well, that, well, oh, look, there's three spots over there. Sense, sit over there. Because they're mo it'd be different if they were moving to really good seats. They're moving to those Everybody crappy seats by zone. you. Everybody wants to sit in the end zone. So that part of it I get, but you should just buy tickets in the end zone. <laughs> Yeah. So I thought that's weird. I mean, that's a little bit of a rant, but it was I've never noticed that in the 24 seasons I've sat in do section think, 16. Do you think it was because it was you had a lot of I, I'm I'm guessing it was a very crowded student section, which also was more in the sun, more directly in the sun than you are. And also a lot of people who were just buying a ticket to get into the stadium. And now we're looking for some breathing room around them. And so they're migrating to an area and that won't happen later in the year. Yeah. That could have been it. I don't know. That that is odd though. But like I said, it was kind of distracting. Oh, just sure it is. People randomly no, walking, it definitely is. walking around, just kind of peeking around. Oh, there's there's three spots over there, and there's four of us. You think we can squeeze in there? And well, I mean, honestly, and not... I, was, I want to be like, well, just check your phone because it's got a ticket on there. Right. You walked in somehow, yeah. unless they didn't pay, like you know, with well, not, security issues. Not to not to make the joke. This sounds like, but. You're trying to be an end zone analyst. You're trying to watch the game. Yeah. You're trying to watch the details. Oh, I'm not trying to be an end zone. I am an end zone. Oh, right. Exactly. I'm the end zone analyst. All that said. Exactly. And you're you're trying to watch every detail of what's going on. And if you've got those distractions, it's hard. Yeah. It's that's that's frustrating. That's tough. Um, we didn't do the wave, so I yeah, no, that's, <laughs> I a that. that's a that's a positive. <laughs> um I don't know. It it. It was the weather was good. Not that anyone controls the weather, but um, that it it wasn't perfect. Don't but boy, Mike Morgan, it was better than most. But I'll tell you this: one thing they do control to a degree, and they did a good job for the most part, was choosing a game time. And we did get a night game, and it would have been a much warmer, less comfortable game had it been during the day. It would have been a lot less fun. We couldn't have done it on a Friday had it been any other time. So that was all nice. Um, as far as a Friday game goes, it went about as good as it could. Um, it'd be interesting to, and I'll talk to people from work and elsewhere who didn't intelligently take the whole day off, how difficult it was to do their day job and then try and come and, and get to Norman and all of that. It, I was a little surprised that there wasn't what seemed like 
um, a, a slow rush to get in at the end. I thought it was going to be one where the, mo the stands were a lot more empty than they ended up being at kickoff. So that was people did a good job. Obviously, it's a priority in their life. I, I, it'd be nice to know the stat of how many people called in sick today. <laughs> I bet it would. <laughs> I bet there was a lot of COVID going around. <laughs> and we talked previously about the high schools moving games from Friday to Thursday. I mean, you had a pretty intense discussion about that. Right. And only a couple of school districts did. I mean, Norman and Murray right. did. But I don't know that that, that many more did, I don't think did move any. From so. someone I talked to, nobody else did. And so it, it, that's interesting because it impacts, obviously, who's going to be able to, to to attend or to watch. Yeah. Uh, that was the – oh, that was the other thing. I don't I mean, think how I many, brought it How up. many dads were sitting in the stands oh, while their kids on the field and they're watching, and they're the, watching the OU game? <laughs> well, not just that. They – the my friend who's a referee was telling me how many people have already, leading up to this, called in – you know, asking for a vacation, canceling, I mean, whatever referees, referees. Yeah. and they're desperate for referees because every they were they want to we'll watch the game. Yeah, and this is you know they they aren't going to do their Friday game, so I bet there were some struggles actually of filling those spots. I wonder if there's any any crews that had to work with one less person uh, yeah. at different places. So I don't know. Um, any other thoughts? Party thoughts on on the game, the game atmosphere, any of that? We covered the spread. Um, you can't be too disappointed by that. It, it came in a weird way, but a lot of games come in weird ways. We've had years in the past where we covered the spread or didn't cover the spread. And it's, you know, we we would say when we covered the spread, hey, we covered the spread and we aren't looking at it was, well, it was all offense. And other game years where we didn't cover the spread and you're saying like, you know, but we're a lot better than that. And it's like, well, yeah, but you were supposed to win by 28 and you won by, you know, 17. So I don't know. It's, it's easy to be negative from the, some of the things we saw, but it's it's also there's a lot of positives, and the team has a lot of work to do. I think would be the the takeaway that I have. Any other parting ideas or comments? Nope. All right. Well, I guess until next time, Boomer. Sooner. Connor's falling asleep. I, I am asleep. Yeah. <laughs>